All right, kids, after all that rhetoric and all those strong beers, uh, now we have Pass Blue Ribbon revisited. Now, now we're we, looking at Pass Blue Ribbon. Okay, a few years ago we did, about two years ago we did Pass Blue Ribbon in a tall can. But then we've we, never done, you can twist that off, you don't need an um, opener. We've never done the bottle well, it's version. It's cooler when you do the opener. I like the twist. Okay, so we did Pass Blue Ribbon easy, we did Plat Pass Blue Ribbon. It wasn't heavy, what was it called? Um, anyway, it was that 601 that they put out, which was six fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Six percent, which and on. yeah, I just got my hands on on a case of it, and that was it, and it was gone. Well, they're saying on the thanks, perhaps they're saying it's still available at the Walmart in Kenna. That's not there. Okay, so we're gonna look at the old red, white, and blue Paps Blue Ribbon. You're thinking of Paps Blue Ribbon Extra? That's what the name was. Back in the 1990s, in the late 90s, I bought Paps Ice and Paps Genuine Draft. Oh, wow. True story. I got the cans to prove it. This is the bottle version. This beer has been on the market since 1844. It's 4.74% alcohol, 4.74. IBUs are low. It's made with corn syrup, okay? Put that out there. It's barley malt, water barley malt, corn syrup, hops, and yeast. It's a simple beer. Uh, back in the 1950s, they were one of the top beer companies. They started losing market share to Anheuser-Busch. They got kind of paranoid, so they started selling it as a budget beer. Um, it kind of worked because the company is still in business after all. They bought out a bunch of other companies, but they own no breweries. They just contract brew. So they're the fourth largest in America. Wow. But they get their beer made by mostly Molson Coors, Miller Coors, you know, and City Brewery in uh, Wisconsin. Um, Oh Miller and Coors just dropped the Miller name. They said there's no, yeah, they're not going to call it Miller Coors in 2020. They're going to be Molson Coors. Well, why call it Miller? It's not a real company anyway. Um, let's see, Paps Blue Ribbon, uh, a few more things. If you go to China, there's many different variants over there. They have Paps General Beer, uh, all kind of variants, but we don't get that. So anyway, all right. All right. So if you pour it, it's just this classic... American light color, you can see right through it. There's absolutely nothing blocking it at all, as the light beer should be. And it, it leaves a foamy head. And since it's a Pilsner, we're drinking on a Pilsner glasses, um, which is just your tall finished beer glass. It's been a good while since we've drank on these. These are these are really good classic beers. I got these in the old Michelob collection back in the day. Oh yeah, right. And uh, I think I've got three of them left. Now, one thing about Paps, I have a 1980 National Geographic magazine, and they, in the, in the magazine, they go to the Paps Brewery and they took a tour, like you know, a private tour, obviously, the author. And and the the brewmaster said, well, if you notice, Paps has sort of a wine taste. And the author said, yeah. He said, why is that? He said, well, because we use a, a yeast called Carl's, Carlsberger yeast. Special yeast that gives it like a wine taste, like if they added Chardonnay to it or something. Huh. I didn't know that. That's what it said in the article. It smells like standard beer, but it's like really good, like you said. Got you mentioned that. It does have like a little wine smell to it. Now they sell this in Europe, but it's a 4.6% version and it's made over there in Europe, contract route. We get the 4.7. In Canada, it's a different ABV. Strange how it changes country to country. You can taste the sweet corn and graininess going on with it. Yeah, it's so... For the most part, it's just clean tasting. Oh man, this is so refreshing compared to that syrup thing we were drinking earlier. Oh yeah. Which I did give a 95 to, but I, I can't drink stuff I'm like that. I'm kind of feeling like I need a PBR just to rehydrate after that thing. Right. The Elysium <laughs> Cyclops barrel age. That was massive. That's that's really not a beer for me. I'm more like a Paps Blue Ribbon person. I'm going to tell you the truth. Yeah, I think you and I had this discussion a while back. It was during the heat of the summer where we were just like, why are we drinking all these heavy beers? 
Let's go back to the classic beers. So, with the exception of some of the, you know, obscure ones that come in the market and we want to try, I think for the most part we're just going to be doing, well, with me, we're going to be doing those types of beers. What you do on your own with your Kool-Aid beers, I don't know. But you can have fun with all that. I just review them because they're on the shelves, you know. But um, they're interesting, though. Those, like you say, Kool-Aid beers, they are interesting. But this is a classic. It's got nice lacing. Look at that foam. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it says the foam lacing in it, which is just a classic style beer. You'd see this when you were a kid. You'd go to the bowling alley with your parents, and they'd have, they'd have that open front bar. And you'd just sit there with your, with your dad and your uncle, and you know, all sitting around drinking beer and having a good time. I'd be on the bowling league. We were playing the pinball machines. Tastes kind of the jukebox. Yeah, it tastes kind of like cornflakes. And um, if you go to, if you go to, um, what's that thing on Willow Avenue? Something Carrollton Station. Yeah. And if you go to um, Henry's Bar on Magazine Street, I don't know if you ever heard of this place. Yep. But they have Pabst Blue Ribbon, the big pints on draft for like two dollars, which is a good deal. Well, that's a bar. And I was in Denver, Colorado in 1999, true story, 20 years ago. And I went to this like hobo bar and it's was like, what kind of bar is this? Uh, but I went there and they had Pabst Blue Ribbon with these glasses like this tall on draft for a dollar. Wow. Naturally, I drank two glasses. Well, we do have a bar down the road that has happy hour, Pabst Blue Ribbon. They'll sell it, in you, sell it to you in a can, but it's still... It's happy hour for dollar fifty. That's not bad. This day you can't age. beat that. No, you're not kidding. Mm -mm. But 19.99 draft paps and those huge glasses. I mean, I was like, okay. It was so hot during the summer there, and I had to walk to the bus station. I was like, okay, I can make it. You know, but that's all right. Anyway, of course, that's before Uber kids. So the bus was our Uber. But we had to go to the line. Yeah, I mean, I had a... Not, like, hey, come pick me up at my front door. No, I mean, I had a pass. Okay, long story short, I bought a Greyhound Day pass. pass. Yeah, I bought yeah. a Greyhound mm -hmm. week. It was for a week. You could Ten days. You could ride anywhere in America for ten days. And it cost me $240, so $24 a day. And I, was, I went to Denver, and... They said, well, the bus might come in for an hour, so I said, what am I going to do? So I went to that bar, like I said, the Hobo Bar, and I said, well, $2, I'll drink it. And, you know, when you get on the bus and it starts rocking and they got the cold air conditioning, you just, like, basically pass out and you be sleeping, you know. So you woke up in Salt Lake City or something? Yeah, something like that, you know. And it, the scary part was one morning, like at 4 in the morning, I asked the bus driver, I said, you don't mind me talking to you, huh? Oh, no, I like that. He said, it keeps me from falling asleep. I was, like, <laughs> I was like, oh, he said, this is the worst time to drive. It's like four in the morning and the bus is like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. he said, he said, it's real bad because you'd be like, he said, it's kind of scary, you know. I was like, oh, that's freaking me out, you know, telling me that you kind of fall asleep while you're driving. But I mean, you know, that's, you have pilots that fly and they fall asleep in the air and they're on autopilot and Oh, I don't know what all uh, Ground control's calling like, hello, hello, hello. You ground know? control the major town. No, I've read about that, where they just, they just out. Anyway, I'm going to say, I'm going to say 94. I mean, this, this is like a thoroughly enjoyable beer, you know? Yeah. I hear, I hear rhetoric, rhetoric from other folks saying it. Oh, well, that's just cheap beer, you know? And I'm like, no, no, it's not. It's, it's really tasting good beer. And you either like it or you don't. So it's it's all about the style. You either like the style or you don't. You like you like that it has that kind of Chardonnay flavor to it or you don't. Uh, overall, in the style, it's excellent. This there's nothing wrong with this beer. Oh, yeah. it's, it's it might really, be the really best. Good. It might be the best macro lager in America, really. Well, maybe Schlitz is, but this is close. And if you look at that old 1980 article, you see that they have. Schlitz, you you mean Schlitz malt like a bull? No, I mean regular Schlitz. No, Schlitz malt like a bull. I didn't mean that. That's a good one. But if you look at the article, they have great photos. But they showed these guys with these huge, like, you know, the plastic garbage cans. 
and they're dumping hops into the kettle, those copper kettles. Uh -huh. It's hops. It's not hop pellets. What they're dumping is like all green. It looks like they're dumping vegetables in there. Real hops. I was like, well, that's a great photo. Anyway. Mm -hmm. All right. So Lazy LA, Bon Tomer Lake. Thanks for watching this video production. And y'all come on down to southeastern Louisiana. Yeah, happy glass.